Shalom. Assalamu alaikum, my friends. Let's discuss uh, uh, something about Isa uh, that the Christian and the Muslim uh, argue about a lot, right? And bicker about. I want to clarify it. Okay, so one time Yeshua, Isa, Jesus is out and about walking and uh, someone runs up to him and says, good teacher, good rabbi, right? He calls him good. And Yeshua, Isa, Jesus says to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but the Father. All right. And then the Muslim, you have the argument and you will say, If Jesus is God, then how can Jesus say, No one is good but the Father. And he's saying, Why do you call me good? All right, all right. Uh, good argument. That's that's very good. It's tricky words, and to a unlearned man, you may catch a guy. But I am very learned. The Most High God teaches me. So this is I ask the Most High God. I want to know about this, so I can clarify it for the Ummah and for the Christian. All right. Now, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and his spirit moved across the water, and he spoke and said, Let there be light. Now you have that light. That light was spoken by who, Muslim? Allah. Therefore, that light is the words of of Allah and and that light that he's speaking out of worth that light has power and authority understand that so when God gives you a law and says thou shalt not kill or let's go to the first commandment have no gods besides me right you have to understand that that word you're listening to, you obeying that word because he spoke it and said, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, right? These things. And you're listening to the word. The, the spirit is not present, but the word is there. The word is present. That tells you that the word has power and authority. Understand that. This is why Yeshua, Isa, Jesus says, All power and authority has been given unto me. Now, let's go with the flesh. Isa himself is not God. He is the Son of God not God himself he is the son meaning as a man what is the what is what can I use of my body that can create not uh I'm not talking I use my hands to create something of my own self what is it that comes out of me that creates that would be sperm, right? And from the female, that is egg. So the sperm is like the word of myself because it is the image and likeness of me. It will be later on, right? So you have the light. That's the light. It does not look yet like the gift given to Miriam, but we know it is still the light. The sperm and the egg do not look like the human yet, but we know that it is the light. It is that which creates flesh. Understand, Muslim? Now, as the gift that is given to Miriam, that light, that word, 
Now, now we get into this because a lot of Muslims can't understand John when John says, In the beginning was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, that is the light in the beginning. In the beginning, that is the storyline. Later on, this light, it says, it says, and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word, the light, became flesh. How? How? Did God make it or did God speak it in existence as a gift to Miriam? Ah, see Muslim. So God spoke this vessel of word into flesh, a gift for Miriam. And this gift to Miriam, this flesh, was the Lamb of God. This flesh was also the Ark of the Covenant. Now, the old covenant had the law in it as well as the staff, right? The new covenant, the old covenant is the ark. It is material. It is dead. It's not living. What's in the ark, when Musa comes to speak to it, what's in that ark is what? Allah. Who is Moses going into the tent behind the veil to see the ark? Who is he going to speak to? Ah, Muslim. Allah is in that ark. Yahweh is in that ark. Jehovah is in that ark. Now, he has taken this metaphor of ark and he, it at first was just a tent of skins, rugs, whatever you want to call. Later, that, that image became King Solomon's temple in which that ark was now placed in there in the thing called the Holy of Holies. The jinn, when they saw Isa walk around, they point at him, we know who you are. You are the most high, the, the Holy One of God. The Holy One. You understand? So in the Holy of Holies dwells the Holy One. Now we get into the vessel of the Holy One. See, the Ark of the Covenant is a material is dead. In the temple built, the temple made of stones, Isa says, look at this great buildings. I tell you the truth, not one stone will be left standing upon another. And that has happened. Allah looks down upon it and then he says, ha. I will use my own arm and I will speak my own lamb. I will speak from me my own son. Remember the sperm and the egg, how it works. His word is his sperm and egg, if you want to look at it in that manner. For out from the light, all things were made. That's sperm and egg. You are made in the image and likeness of the Most High God. Yes. So in that, Allah looks down. He says, ha, with my own arm, I shall do it. I shall create for my own self a living temple. And I shall dwell in him. Oh, shit, Muslim. Shit. Do you see it now? So the Ark of the New Covenant. The old has been fulfilled. The lamb was sacrificed. Sin and repentance is now available. The New Covenant now becomes a living temple. So Isa says, I shall destroy this temple. Now is it Isa saying that he's going to kill himself? Or is that which is inside Isa? Allah, is he speaking from him? For you know, 
in the story of the Quran, it says, I will put my spirit and my words in that ark. I can do nothing of myself. What I see my father doing, that is what I do. I am just flesh. Right? All flesh has been cursed as sin. Right? You understand? Isa, being sinless, took upon all sin. Understand now? That's why it has to be unblemished. Because if it has blemished, that is najis. Right? It's unclean. It's not a it's not a good lamb. It's a blemished lamb. We need something that has not sin on it. So Allah says, with my own arm, I will make a man. And I will be the sinless man. How? Well, the spirit is that which gives life. Now to Adam, Hahawa, the thing that gave them life was the ruch, the breath of God gave them life. That which is in Isa is the very spirit that gives life. The very spirit that created the word. Understand? The Father is in me and I am in you is the words of Isa. You understand? So now, back to that storyline of when the guy's good teacher, why do you call me good? Now you have to understand this. If Isa had not had Allah in him as the ark, he himself would not be good. Understand? So that is when, when Allah leaves him, when the spirit leaves that ark that is on the cross, Yeshua cries out to him, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I have done nothing. Right? You understand? So that flesh is meaningless. It's the spirit that gives it life. Therefore, we say, Allahu Akbar. Yes. Understand it? But it does not mean that that very word is the power and authority of the Most High God. He is greater than any prophet. All prophets bow down to Him, the Word, which is in Him is Allah. That's why they bow down to Him. Not that they're bowing down to the flesh. It's the same as when you go into the masjid. Why do you go to the building of the masjid? Who are you trying to speak with there? Who are you praying to there? So is the masjid holy? Or is he who is supposed to be there holy? Ah, Muslim, see? The masjid, look at the stones. I tell you, all these stones will fall down. But that which you went in there for, the Father, the Spirit, is what is makes that building holy. If Allah leaves the building, that building is no longer holy. Understand? When it comes to Isa, though, however, when Allah leaves him, he took upon all sin. So while he was alive, he had no sin. He was considered, I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. As being on the cross, when the Spirit leaves him, all sin is now upon that lamb, according to the law, and that lamb now is not holy. So God cannot stay in that vessel. But he says this, I will take that which is halal. I will make it haram. And I will take that which is haram and I will raise it on the third day and make it halal again. Allahu Akbar. All things are possible with the Most High God. Understand? So, 
to clarify the story when Yeshua is saying, Why do you call me good? No one is good but the Father. Now you understand the true interpretation. He's not saying that he is not good. Because we can look out in the world and I, I myself can say, Hey, you see that guy over there? He is good. He's better than me. I cuss. I smoke cigarettes. But I worship God. This guy, he worships God. He does not smoke, nor does he cuss. He's better than me. In flesh. Understand? But the spirit that was in within us, that is what gives life. That is what is greater when it comes to the flesh. Okay? That is why Yeshua can correct Musa and say about certificate of divorce, it was not so. He only gave you that for the hardness of your heart. But from the foundation, it was not so. When Musa took and hit the rock, Allah got mad. I did not tell you to hit the rock. I told you to speak to the rock. You want to hit it now. Ah, you in trouble. <laughs> See, Moses not listening. So prophets are good, right? You even say, peace be upon them. Prophets are good. They're a better man than most men. But the only reason that that man is a good, better man is why? Because the spirit that they have in them, the word that dwells in them. Ah, the father is in me. And I will be in you. So that word that we speak in is the light. You understand it now? So there's lots of things that people will try to manipulate in the word and try to prove this or prove that. But look, I just proved everybody wrong. I have shown you a truth. This is why Yeshua does not say, worship me, I am God. He is flesh. The first commandment says, Thou shalt have no gods before Allah. All right? Isa is the ark. But remember this, Muslim. When that ark of the covenant was being carried across the Jordan River, or one of the rivers, it started to teeter. And the ark started to fall. And one of the Kohens, one of the priests, one of the imams reached out to try to touch it so it would not fall. And what happened to the man that touched him? Boom. You're done. You died. Don't touch the word of God. If God is causing the word of that ark to fall, if God is taking Isa to die on the cross, don't touch it. He'll kill you. He'll rip you apart like a lion. For that is his stuff. You got your own. Go play with your own nonsense. You leave the Most High God's stuff and his word alone. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. And don't concoct imaginations from it. Right? So... You have the understanding now that Isa kno knows the law. He knows the first commandment. He knows he is a lamb, but he also knows that he is the sun. He is the light. Okay? Me, I'm adopted. I'm the moon. I'm like adopted. <laughs> right? <laughs> I am not from Allah. <laughs> like like Yeshua is. I am formed from the blood clot in the sperm, right? I have mother and father. And I have become, God has looked upon me with grace. And he has said, I want you. I will adopt you. And he lifted me up and he took me into his arms. As, as I was a son. You understand? For even in the thing you're reading in the in Jill, it talks to you about what? There is a guy. He goes to the father. He says, I want what belongs to me. Give to me what belongs to me. 
So the father says, fine, okay, here, you have what belongs to you. There is the eldest son and the younger son. The younger son goes into the father and says this. The eldest son doesn't say anything. So the younger son takes what God gives him and he goes and squanders it amongst the prostitutes and everything else. All the things in the world. He squanders it. And now he's broke. And he's feeding the pigs. And he sits down in his misery and in his chaos of what he has done. And he looks up to the sky and he says to the Most High God, Oh, I'm so hungry. I am so hungry I could eat the slop that the pigs eat. My life was better off with God instead of running away. So he picks himself up and he goes back to the Father. And lo and behold, the Father, he has been looking. All this time, every day, he comes out to look for his son who has run away. Oh, where has my son gone? Where have they gone? And he sees in a distance his son. And he calls his eldest son. Is that, the, is that him? Is that your brother? Is that the moon that I see on the horizon? And the eldest son the son says, yes, father, it is him. His father immediately goes and runs out and greets his son. His son bows onto his knees and his father lifts him up from his knees and puts him into his bosom. He says, father, I am not worthy. I have squandered everything. I have done bad. His father forgives him and takes him back into the great big castle of heaven. And he says to the eldest son, go and get the best of the lambs from our flock. And the father put the ring on his finger. Okay. And as the feast is going on, the eldest son, the son, goes to the father and he says, Father, all of these years I have been with thee. I have never disobeyed thee. Yet, when this moon comes back, you look upon it and you give it all the blessings. Me, you have given nothing. The father looks at the son. He says, Son, do you not know that all the things that I have are yours? But look at thy brother who had nothing whirling around in the darkness of the world. He has come back and repented. Shouldn't we not be glad for this? And the son who knows the Father's truths and righteousness. He says, You are right, Father. In fact, you deserve praise and glory for what you have done. So all of them return to the feast and are hu happy, hugging, joyful, Praising the Father for what He has accomplished in His plan. And remember this Muslim, what he says to the Son. All the things that I have are yours. The Father is in me, and now the Son is reflecting off of the moon. The Father is in me, and I am in you, and we are one. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum.